content. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Yes, as I said in the intro, it is Spookathon time, which means I will be starting my vlogs for Book and Lala's, Books in Lala's um, Spookathon challenge, which is a readathon for the next week, the 14th to the 20th, and I will be reading five books to complete the five different challenges. So the first book that I'm going to be reading is actually going to complete challenge number four. So I'm not going to do all the challenges in order, one, two, three, four, five, just because of the length of the book and what I think I can actually finish in a week and why. So I'm going to be starting off with completing the fourth challenge, which is a spooky setting. So anywhere that seems spooky, creepy, scary, Halloween-y, whatever. And so as I said in my announcement video, the book I chose for that is the... House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. I'm really excited to read this one. This has been recommended a lot on booktube and I've seen it everywhere in bookstores and everything like that so I'm really excited to read it and form my own opinion on it and see what I really think of it. I say it's set in a spooky setting because it's in a house where all the daughters keep getting murdered. I wouldn't want to live there so therefore it is spooky and I say it fits the challenge. So this is what I will be starting with tonight as soon as it turns midnight which should be in about six minutes. But I'm honestly gonna say this now is that I'm gonna read like a chapter of this and then I'm gonna go to bed because I have class in the morning. And I want to have sleep for class so this is gonna be a very interesting readathon because it's gonna be balancing class, homework, sleep, and reading. So we'll see how this goes. The second book I'm going to read actually completes the fifth challenge, which is something you wouldn't normally read. I just flat out don't normally read mystery, thriller, horror, just because every time I try to read a mystery book, especially mystery books, I always choose the bad ones that I predict and are duds and I know that they're not all like that, but I just, I have bad choice apparently. And it bothers me because I know I would love them. But oh well, what can I do? I just keep searching. And so I figured for this one, I can't go wrong with Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. I chose this one to be next because it's a shorter book and it's obviously a classic and it's something I don't normally read. It's only 250 pages and it's a beautiful book to carry around so I'm really excited. So I chose this one to be the second one that I'm going to do because after the one I'm most excited for, I'm going to start doing with what are the shortest and more likely that I can get done in a week. So challenge number five. The next shortest book that I have, I mean book that I'm going to read, completes completes challenge number two which is to have red on the cover and in my TBR I kind of went back and forth between two books I divided on for this uh, one was the scythe book which I really want to read but I think it's just too big for me to attempt to read that and four other books in a week so I opted to go with my other choice Frankenstein because again it's another classic that I haven't read which is completely disastrous of me I know it's horrible I love classics and yet I haven't read the most famous classics I don't know how but Frankenstein isn't gonna be too long um it is a bit of an older read so we'll see how well I get through that <laughs> but um, I'm gonna do my best so my third book is going to be Frankenstein and it completes challenge number three and I'm hoping that I can read at least these three books plus the audiobook. I'll explain that right about now. So as I just mentioned, I will be listening to an audiobook and therefore I don't have an actual physical book, but it's going to be The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. That's going to complete the third challenge, which is having something spooky in the title. I mean, a graveyard is pretty spooky, especially around this time of year. Hoo -hoo -hoo. So I decided to go with that one, and it will be an audiobook, so I'm hoping I can get that done, especially since it's actually due in the li for the library online in four days, so I have to actually finish it before this week is up, and I just bought a new pair of headphones so that I can walk between classes and listen to it, because my last headphones broke. I'm not going down that road. But... So my goal is to finish at least those three books as well as the audiobook so I can get four out of the five challenges done. That's the goal. That's the plan. And we're going to find out how that goes. But if I do manage to finish all that and have a day or two to spare, then yes, 
I will try and finish challenge number one, the one I keep the same every year, of course, is the one I might not get to. Cla casual, classic, I know. But challenge number one is read a thriller. And so for that one, I've chosen another book that's gotten a lot of chatter recently, and I've been seeing everywhere, but I'm really excited for, and that's Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Menestikalo. I chose this one because it's not just a thriller, but it's also historical fiction, and so it's going to be a little bit more than that, which piques my interest a little bit more than just a thriller, because um, I actually tried listening to a Stephen King book. I tried listening to Pet Cemetery, and I only got a couple hours in because I just didn't care for it. I liked the premise of it, but I just didn't like like his writing or his characters all that much. So I just kind of dropped it and just returned it to the library. I'm sorry, I tried. So thrillers just aren't my thing, which is why I chose this, because it'll have the historical element to it, and hopefully it'll just be something that piques my interest a lot more than just a plain thriller. So yes, those are the five books that I plan on reading slash listening to for one of them for the next week. And it is actually 12 o'clock right now. So I'm going to read a chapter of my first book and get started on it and then just go to bed and see what all I can do tomorrow. So I will see you in the morning, although you're not going to see this until probably the week is done because I'm just going to do one giant vlog. So, but I will start recording in the morning as soon as I get a chance to crack this op book open again. But for now, a chapter, and good night. Yo! So I stayed up way too late last night and read way too much because I am now on chapter 13 on page 113. I said I'd read one chapter and then that just didn't happen. So I'm like really tired, but I had to wake up this morning to do homework. <sighs> so I made a bad decision, but... It's also a really good head start on this readathon, so we'll see how it goes. If I can keep up this pacing, it'd be great, but we will see. <laughs> Hopefully I can get some reading done at work. Uh, I won't be able to vlog very much throughout today in my daily life because, you know, I'll be at classes and, like, moving around and people and whatnot. So... I will mostly just update you when I'm actually in my dorm, um, but I have a very busy day, so we'll see how that is, but I have one of those wonderful jobs where it's like, if there's no work to do, then do your homework. If you have no homework to do, then do whatever you want. So if I can get all my homework done, then I will for sure be able to read for a couple hours today at work, so we'll see, but yeah, I'm dead tired, and I made that mistake, but I also kind of don't regret it. So, haha, -ha, so a couple of updates. First off, I have the best job in the world. Well, okay, maybe not in the world. Best college job ever. My bosses are amazing and I have so much time and it's wonderful. Also, college is hard. It's no easy math. It's no easy magic trick. You can't just snap your fingers and oh, everything is done and perfect and completed and whoop de do. No, not even close. Um, but, going back to the first point, I have the best job in the world because I can read and I am now on page 208 of The House of Salt and Sorrow, which is exactly halfway through the book. So I have managed to read half of this book. <laughs> I'm slightly frazzled, both by real life events and also what's happening in this book because I feel like there are so many things going on. And like as soon as it talks about one thing, I'm like, oh, so excited, and then it switches to another, and I'm like, oh, wait, but the last thing, oh, but this thing. And I'm bouncing from thing to thing, and I'm just, I need to read it and finish it. I'm not even listening to the audiobook of the um, graveyard book yet, because I am reading this book as I'm walking. Uh, so, because I'm just so entranced by it right now. There are a couple of things so far on the horizon that I'm not super on board with. Like, there's a love triangle forming, which I'm just not the biggest fan of for a couple of reasons. One, so many love triangles in so many books. I'm just, I want something new and different. I'm kind of sick of love triangles. And two, 
it's very, I, it's a very clear I want her to be with this guy, um, and it's, I have the exact same opinion for every single love triangle, because it's, again, it's the childhood friend and this new mysterious stranger. I will almost always go for the childhood friend, and they always go for the mysterious stranger, and then that fails, and then they go back to the friend, and it just, it, I, it annoys me so much because everybody does it, it's no longer a new, unique thing, like, everyone has done it. And so, that's starting to form in the book, and I'm not super excited about that, because I just want her to be the childhood friend, because it's just so obvious, but no. She has to go, it's, just, ugh, it's a whole thing. <sighs> but yeah, so that's the update. It's 5.32, so... I am done with all of my required things. I do have a couple of things yet that I have to do this evening, so I should probably get started on those. And then once I'm done with that, I'm just planning on spending the rest of my time reading. So my, my goal is to get the 300 pages, is to be three-fourths of the way through the book so that I can finish it tomorrow and hopefully start the next book tomorrow, which is Murder on the Orient Express. I had to check. It's Murder on the Orient Express to start tomorrow, and obviously I'm going to hopefully get going on that audiobook. Uh, so yeah, that's the update. Let's go continue to be productive. Yay! I'm back. Stuff got done. Homework is finished. Tap was tapped. Reading was read. I am now on page 286 of The House of Salt and Sorrows, and oh my word, it is a page turner, let me tell you. I am going through it quickly and I'm reading much faster than I normally do. I'm so excited. Like, I have a theory and then there's this whole twist that came in that I actually wasn't expecting. But, like, I'm still holding strong to my theory, but I might be wrong. Ooh, I don't know. Ah, I have ideas and uh, I'm almost done. I'm probably going to finish it tonight, even though it's just past 10 o'clock and I should go to bed. But... I could also finish this book and I honestly am having a hard time vlogging right now because I just want to sit and read the book. I've got 124 pages left and I'm like, what's gonna happen? I'm so, oh. so I really want to know and it's driving me crazy. So I'm just doing a short little update.
Okay, two things. One, I'm ditching my old theory. I don't think I was right. So my initial thought was that the oldest daughter died and then got lonely in death and started killing her sisters so that she wouldn't be alone. I think I'm wrong. I'm on page 294, chapter 30. And so I'm completely abandoning that theory at this point. So I think I'm wrong and it's something else and I'm intrigued. Um, and then the second thing was, what was the second thing? I don't remember what the second thing was, but like... Ah. Mm. Mm. Oh, I remember what the second thing was. The second thing was... Um... So I complained earlier about the love triangle and how I'm just sick and tired of those and it's in this novel and I'm like, heh. They've kind of stepped away from it, which I am enjoying. Well, um, but like one of the guys was very mature about it and was like, all right, yep, she didn't go for me. All right, peace out, which was really nice. It was a very non-dramatic and, non and very subtle way of just like, getting rid of the love triangle thus far at least he um so I'm not I'm obviously not gonna spoil who she picks and stuff like that but I'm just happy that they kind of moved away from it and it's not a main thing slash it's kind of not a thing anymore at this point so yeah that was the second thing I have 106 pages left in this book and I'm just so excited but the time is I'm gonna check 10 35 at night so I really should sleep but also my roommate isn't here and I don't want to go to bed without her so like I'm just gonna keep reading mm -hmm. yeah that's what I'm gonna do She keeps mentioning we all grieve in our own way, which I like because that is true. We all grieve differently. And it's very interesting to see in this book how everybody grieves differently and how other people handle that. But yeah.
I'm so confused. Oh, this book is really starting to freak me out. Seriously, like, I'm scared out of my mind a little bit. I know I, I cannot stop tonight because if I do, I'm gonna, like, stay up, not be able to sleep, or I'm gonna have nightmares or something, and I... Ah, oh, uh -uh, I'm like slightly freaked out. Anything that makes a noise in my room, I'm just like, ooh, it's the weeping woman. I'm like slightly freaked out talking about it out loud. It is 12.17 in the morning, and I just finished The House of Salt and Sorrow. Don't quite know how to react, because it was so good and phenomenal, but at the same time, like, I'm thinking so much. I loved this book. Like, I really enjoyed it. it was, oh, it's just crazy. I would probably, my instinct is to give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars, because I, I don't like giving out perfect scores, I don't like giving out perfect 5 stars, but like, this comes pretty darn close, because oh my goodness, it's like the twists and turns, but the possibilities, and it's like, oh I thought this, but then I was wrong, but then I was actually right, but then like, wait not quite it was crazy but it's late at night and so i i finished a book i read this book all today so one book for spookathon done on day one and it was probably the longest book of them all it was exactly 400 pages like exactly now what's really cool is the author went to the university of michigan wood wood I'm not a student there, but I am from Michigan, so Michigan Pride, I mean, Detroit, wood wood, but yeah, so I'm gonna go to bed now and just kind of let this book incubate in my mind because I can't quite formulate a response or a review yet because I just need to let it sink in because uh, I knew I wasn't going to be able to go to bed without finishing it and I'm really glad I stayed up and finished it. But now I'm going to be dead tired tomorrow. But we'll see. At least the murder on the Orient Express is only 240 pages. So I mean, hey. But yeah. So with that, it's 1220. I'm going to sleep. But it was a good day. Hello everyone. It is now Tuesday, the second day of Spookathon. And it is... 3.22 in the afternoon. I'm sorry I didn't have time to vlog this morning and give an update. I had to wake up and immediately get out the door to meet people and do things and it was slightly hectic, especially since I did not go to bed until a little bit later last night because I stayed up finishing The House of Salt and Sorrow. Yeah, I read all 400 pages and I finished it. And you all know this because literally the last clip was me freaking out about it. And I think at the end of this vlog, I'm going to give a review of all the books that I've read throughout this week. Just so that I can have time to process it all and also just kind of say which was my favorite of the five and which was my least favorite and etc. and so forth. Um, because of that, I have, I have been able to start... Murder on the Orient Express. I'm only reading the first story, even though in here there are three different stories. Um, and I am four chapters into this already. I'm on page 30, I'm right at the beginning of chapter 4. So that's coming along. Um, but yeah, I have one more thing to do tonight and to get dinner, so hopefully I can get a lot of reading done. It'd be nice if I could finish the book, but we'll see. I'm not super set on I have to finish it because I was expecting House of Salt and Sorrow to take longer, um, and then it didn't, so now I can just kind of coast my way through, but also still make sure I'm reading things. It's because it's seven days to read five books, and like I said, one's an audiobook and one is already done. Update on the audiobook. I haven't really started it yet because uh, my headphones. Uh, they have to go through a converter for my phone, and that converter no longer works. 
So I can't listen to anything on my phone without or with headphones. So I'm slightly stressed and annoyed at that. So I have to go out and find a new converter, which I'm not excited about. Otherwise, I have to read a seven and a half hour long book in my dorm room or in a room where I'm not disturbing people by not having headphones. So pretty much my dorm room when my roommate either isn't here or does have headphones. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Good afternoon. It is 2.07 a.m. <laughs> no, that's when I went to bed last night. 2.07 p.m. Thank you, roommate. And I had a very busy morning, which is why I didn't do any sort of vlogging this morning. But yes, I did go to bed at 2 a.m. Technically this morning, slash last night. Um, and I really didn't do any reading. I stayed up doing other things, which was not the smartest thing to do in college or for a readathon. They were, they, they were booky things. They were just creating books rather than consuming books. Did get a bunch of reading, well maybe not a bunch, but I did get to read during work today, which was nice. So I, Murder on the Orient Express is divided into three parts, and so this morning at work I finished the first part, and I'm about halfway through the second part, so I'm like halfway through the book. Um, my goal is to finish the second part before I have to go to another thing at three, so that gives me just under an hour to do that. And then today I want to just finish the book and I will be all caught up with what my plan is and then I can get started on my third book, which is Frankenstein, haha. <laughs> but first I need to finish Murder on the Orient Express and I am really enjoying the book so far. I didn't actually think I would because like for the first third, the first section of it, I was like kind of confused because there were so many characters and like some of them have personalities and some of them kind of didn't. I was just like trying to figure everything out. But like how she did the second part of it was just all the interviews and gathering evidence. So each chapter was interviewing a different person. And I love, I love that format. It's so much easier to keep the character straight, to understand what's going on, to really just take a minute and be like, so what happened? Okay, next person. So what happened? <laughs> Okay, next person. So I have it, and you're starting to get piece by piece what's going on. Um, so this, the second section is so far my favorite, but, you know, we'll see until I get to the third section when everything actually comes to a close and we find out who actually did it. But, um, who knows? Maybe that'll be my favorite. Maybe the second bit will still be my favorite. Don't know. But I need to get reading. So I will update you tonight before I go to bed or before I start reading before I go to bed. Who knows? It honestly just depends on how late I stay up reading and how much I read. But yeah. So I hope your spookathon is going well at this point. Probably more productive than mine, but hey. I chose shorter books, what can I say? It's probably the smarter thing to do for a college student. But yeah, I'm gonna read now. So goodbye. And I'm back and it's ten nineteen at night. I have finished everything I need to do, I've had a little bit of relaxing time, I got a lot of cleaning done in my room and in the dorm, which has been great because I've been able to listen to the audiobook for that, The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and I'm really, really happy about it. Um, I'm a good two hours in, I've got another five hours to go in the book, but I'm listening to it at 1.6 speed. So it tells me that I have five hours to go, but it's going to be more like two and a half, maybe two hours to go before I finish it, which is good because it's due in one day and 21 hours, so I pretty much need to finish it tomorrow, which is not a lot to ask, um, or at least the day after tomorrow, before bedtime kind of thing. Um, so yeah. I finally started and have made a good chunk of progress on the audiobook. And then for and then for the Murder on the Orient Express, I'm hoping to stay up and finish that. Hopefully it won't take me too long because I really want to sleep because of the lack of sleep I had last night. So and the night before that because I stayed up reading. Uh, <laughs> 
So we'll see. I definitely am going to finish Murder on the Orient Express tonight, no matter what, because that was the goal, that was the plan, and I can sleep in a little bit tomorrow, but yeah, I'm about halfway through it right now, but it's a pretty quick read, and it's only a total of like 200 something, maybe 250 at the most, yeah, something like that, so it really shouldn't take me that long. So, but I'm gonna get to that and I'll see you in the morning, hopefully <laughs> I don't snooze my alarm too much in the morning, and I'll update you then. Sorry this vlog has not been very entertaining at this point, but um, we'll see what we can do. Good night. So I haven't vlogged at all today, and I'm so sorry, it is 9.20 at night. College life, it really does get you busy. But I was able to get a lot of reading done at work today. I am now three chapters away, three or four chapters away from finishing um, Murder on the Orient Express. It took me a moment there. It looks like I have a lot more, but that's because this is the edition that has and other Hercule Puajo mysteries. So the detective, it's Murder on the Orient Express plus two more books in here actually. Um, so it looks like I'm not quite close to being done, but I am actually really close to being done. I am 25, 30 pages from the end and I'm really excited because it's like, you're, this is the time when everyone's figuring out who is lying about what and why they're lying and like how that affects the case and things like that. So it's really... It's not super intense. It's like a good relaxing, just traditional whodunit. Like Agatha Christie, whodunit. They're all on a train, someone died. There are a bunch of people. Now you know most of the information except for like the lies and who actually did it and why. So I'm gonna finish that right now. And then afterwards, I'm going to listen to the audiobook and do some things as I listen to the audiobook. I'm hoping to finish both books tonight because I have, let's see, I'm three hours into it so I've got like four and a half hours left but again it tells me I have four and a half hours left but like I'm also listening to it um, just over double that so it should only really be just over two hours left for me. Um, so then that way I can get started on Frankenstein and I'm really excited to do that. Woohoo! Um, yeah. So I've also got my trusty tea here. I made this tea a while ago, so like the mug doesn't show, but it's got like the Marauders map around it, and it's a Harry Potter themed mug. It's one of those ones where it like it heats up and the design comes out. But I've been letting it sit for a little bit now, and so it's not there anymore. But I've got my cran. I've got my apple cinnamon tea with me because it's fall. So I'm going to have those themed drinks. Okay, no more stalling. I am going to finish this book. Go.
there's a ladybug in our room. I'm not alone. <laughs> Got him there.
one more chapter. Last 10 pages, here we go, yeah. But find out who it was, because apparently he knows, but I don't, so I'm gonna read now and find out who. Mrs. Hubbard, very accurate of certain American women, but Mrs. Albert, though, she's so funny.
I'm not done. But I think I see where he's going with this, and I think it's all coming together.
I really should read more mystery novels. Especially novels of this style. Easy to comprehend. Calm, but still want to know who did it. So, that is the second book done for this readathon. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie completes challenge. It completes the challenge number five, something I wouldn't normally read because I don't normally read mysteries. I should, but I don't. But I should. So, now that this is done and I have two of the challenges completed and two books completed, and it is, what time? It is 9.52. I do have to wake up early tomorrow to go to work, but I still want to listen to the audiobook and see if I can't get it done tonight. Um, because, you know, how awesome would that be? Plus, it's, the audiobook is due tomorrow before, like, dinner time-ish. So I really do need to get it done very soon. I have less than 24 hours, I know that. So I am going to just do some other things and listen to that. I can't really record or film when I do that because I'm listening to the audiobook on my phone. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off. And um, if I finish the audiobook tonight, I will give you an update. If I don't, then I probably won't because I'll probably be really tired. So yeah. So if this is good night, then good night. Good morning! I'm at least trying to have some books behind me for one of these vlog videos just to get the aesthetic together. But yes, it is 7.23 in the morning. I've woken up and I've gotten ready so that I can go to work and then go to class. Um, I did finish Murder on the Orient Express last night as it was very obvious in my vlog that I did so. Um, I did listen to a lot more of the audiobook, I have, but I haven't finished it. I have about two hours left, but I bumped my reading speed up to 1.8 times quickly. So hopefully I'll have just a little over an hour left um, of actual listening to it instead of a full two hours. Um, I'm really enjoying the graveyard book though. It's like one of those things I don't want to rush it because I love it, but I also need to finish it today or the library will take it back. Um, so we're gonna see what we can do <laughs> about that um but yeah so that's my morning update Ooh, that's my morning update 7 30 in the morning i need to go to work um i am starting frankenstein today i did not start it last night because i need to go to sleep so that i could wake up early i woke up at 6 30 um so at work today i'll work a couple of hours and i'll probably get some good reading done there um, and I'm really excited, and I'm especially really excited to read Frankenstein because it's a classic that I haven't read yet, and I do love reading classics. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this day goes, and I'll update you later. I know, I know. It's Saturday morning, and I haven't been vlogging. But I have been reading. <laughs> 